In today's live broadcast, I'm going to be covering a question that I hear all the time when moms reach out to me to say, I'm overwhelmed and I have tried my hardest to be a gentle parent, to be present, and it's not working. When that happens, there are usually a few reasons why. And I'm going to cover these today. If you're someone who wants with all of your being to be a present, calm parent, a connected parent, and you've chosen an approach like a gentle parenting, or you just take in general a gentle approach to parenting your children. You don't want to be harsh. You want to do it differently than your parents did. You don't want to make fear-based threats and pull the power card to control your kids or control their behavior or get them in line like your parents did, then you may be more aligned with an approach like gentle parenting, which is wonderful in theory, but often falls apart for people in implementation. So first I want to say well done on having an intention of doing it better than your parents did. Most of us want that. We want to be better. We want to have a really beautiful, long connection with our children. We want them to feel safe to come to us and tell us things that scare them. We want them to hit the teenage years and we want to be in the loop. We want to be a part of their decision-making process for as long as they need us. And then we want to know and trust that they're going to be good. They're going to make great decisions. They're going to never get stuck. They're going to know how to live free of anxiety or depression and that they're going to thrive. And we want to give them the tools to know how to do that. And gentle parenting seems like a great way to do that. Well, here's one thing to notice. I have seen a lot of parents who are sensitive moms, tuned in moms, a lot of empaths will be drawn to the gentle parenting approach. They will choose an approach like that because they want to be present, because they want their children to be, uh, to have a high EQ, because they want to, to be connected to their kids. And then suddenly it seems that something about it isn't working. Kids are babies. Great. I can gentle parent, you know, any baby on the planet. And then they start to have, uh, they start to mobilize, become toddlers. Then they become three and four year olds who have free will and are demonstrating that free will. Right. Those of you who have kids that age or, or older, you know what I'm talking about. And then the real work begins. How to gently parent a little being with raw emotions who has their own opinions, their own free will, their own desire, and doesn't want to hear what you have to say, or doesn't want to do it your way. Okay. So keep in mind, most people who choose gentle parenting have an ideal version of what they want for motherhood in their minds. And that sounds so appealing. And what, pe what happens is people mistake the approach of gentle parenting to mean that my house will be quiet and peaceful and gentle at all times and I'll never have to get firm with this kid or I'll never really have to draw a strong boundary and set a limit and listen to big meltdowns. There's, there's a misconception around what gentle parenting is. That's the first pitfall. The second pitfall is remember you're choosing this as a parent because it sounds good to you, but your child may or may not be a great candidate for gentle parenting. Now, I know this may seem like stirring the pot, but not all kids do well when they are gently parented in the way that people think of as gentle parenting. Some children who are highly intense, who are neurodivergent, some children who are uh, very uh, highly, highly sensitive. Some children who are um, have, have a particular type of temperament, which is low frustration tolerance, which is inflexible, which is rigid, struggle with, with transitions. Some kids, and I could go on and on and on, but this is not a one-size-fits-all approach. What some children need is for you to be a very strong presence in their lives in the moments where it counts. They don't need a shrinking violet. What they need is a warrior to help them to hold a container for their very disorganized emotions. 
so that when they melt down and fall apart and break into a million pieces and you're there for that, trying to just gently be present for them, what they actually need is a more proactive approach. What they actually need is a stronger container. What they actually need is for you to step in and be that kind of force field for them. And I would never, never say that kids need, um, I, I'm in total disagreement with the old way. It goes without saying probably, but threats, um, I don't even use the word discipline is not in my vocabulary when it comes to parenting. I don't believe the word discipline needs to be in a discussion about parenting because parenting is about relationships and it's about modeling and it's about coaching. It's not about discipline. If you're doing it right, parenting has nothing to do with discipline. Discipline is about the self discipline for yourself as a mother in your practices, in your, in your, uh, in how you, what you focus on and how you're going to, um, take a stand for your kids, for yourself, that kind of thing. Discipline applies. But in terms of the kind of relationship-based parenting approach, which I teach in Awakened Motherhood, what matters most is that you are clear on what your child needs. And maybe it is a gentle parenting approach, but maybe it's something else. Maybe it's something else. If what you're doing is not working, like a lot of parents who reach out to me who are super sweet and have big hearts and have really tried and are empaths and are tuned in, and what they're doing with their kids is falling flat. And the horror stories that I hear are when kids get to five, six, seven, eight, they start tuning mom out. They're not listening to you anymore. They're disregarding or blowing off what you've said. That's not the fault of gentle parenting but it's the fault of not knowing how to have a really strong spine and a strong presence as a mom. I call it strong, loving presence when I teach this. Not knowing how to do that, gentle parenting won't save you. If you have that piece of, um, hey, this is, this is our house together. What we do and how we do it has to work for everybody. But if it doesn't work for me as a mom, then it's not going to work for the kids. And the same is true for you. So if your children are pushing back a lot, if they're tuning you out, if you feel like you're not getting the respect that you want, or they're not valuing what you have to say, and you have taken a gentle parenting approach, and you're kind of at the end of your rope about that, I want to really invite you today to explore what is the result that you do want that you're not getting from them? Because we get that for people. Like it really does take training and skill building. It's not that there's something wrong with you or there's something wrong with your child. That's just never the answer. That's never the mystery that we unveil in client work. What is true is that there are things that your child needs that need to be addressed so that the relationship can be repaired, so that the parenting can be upgraded, so that you can give your child the support that they need to help them thrive. And that's all it is. And it needs to be done in a way that works for you. So if you try to put on a hat that doesn't fit and parent in this attachment parenting way when you're touched out, it's obviously not going to work. If you're trying to parent with a gentle parenting hat on and you're frustrated and you're irritated and you're edgy, guess what? Not going to work. No way in hell is that going to work. Everybody's going to feel like they're walking on eggshells around you. That's not gentle parenting. That is, I don't really know what I want kind of parenting. That's, I don't know how to deal with what I'm feeling and how to move through what I'm feeling kind of parenting. So I'm stuck. Does that make sense? So say below, if you have used a gentle parenting approach, something that has worked for you about it, I'd love to hear what's working. We want to focus on what's working always to increase that. But if there's something that hasn't worked about it, then I want to know what that is too. And let's find out where you're getting stuck in that. Because often it's a shift that starts up here and once we make that shift up here then we bring that into the implementation of how we speak to kids 
of how we respond to them, of how we get their attention, how we get them to hear us and understand that what we say is important. That's an attitude shift. That's a belief system upgrade. And when you can embody that identity of this is who I am as a mom and what I have to say is important, you guys need to listen because it's in your best interest for you to listen to me. That's about building you up. And that's what we do in Awakened Motherhood. We build the pieces of that identity so that you get to find out who you need to be to have the life that's on your heart that you envision, to enjoy being in your own home, to know how to put your feet up and not feel bad about it for half a second, to know how to hand your, your responsibilities off or your, your kid duties off or whatever it is so you can take breaks, you can nurture you, you can amplify your, um, your life purpose, you can recover whatever it is you need, whatever stage you're at, right? So in order to be that, this really is a, the answer really is about building up the skill set to live at that level where you get to enjoy motherhood every day, where you get to enjoy your children every day. And, and it really shouldn't be thankless work. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be thankless work. A lot of a lot of times people will reach out to me and say, like, I feel so unappreciated. I feel like no one sees me and no one really hears me. And I'm so successful in my career and I'm so successful in my team of, of five, of 10, of 100. Like, they hear me. They believe what I have to say. That piece feels easy, but then I get home and everybody tunes me out. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? There's something going on there. There's something from your early life that is blocking you from really fully realizing your power in the relationships in your life. And that's pretty, pretty common. People should hear you. People should respect what you have to say at home as much as in the office. People should uh, make eye contact, should turn and look at you when you talk, should hear what you have to say should take the direction and implement it. Not perfectly, not 100% of the time, but you should get that respect. If you're not getting it at home, you guys, there's only one reason why. And that is, and I know it hurts, it's because you're not commanding it. You're not commanding the respect. And that's because of a lot of things that I won't go into today. I don't have time to go into all the reasons why that happens. But know that if you've tried approaches and they have flopped for you, approaches like gentle parenting, like attachment parenting, and you feel irritable, resentful, you don't even want to be around your family because it's not fun, it's not that you're broken. It's not that they're broken. Don't make that meaning of it. The meaning to make of it is you just need a skill upgrade. You need help and expert support. You need guidance. And if that's where you're stuck and what you're wanting, reach out to me and we'll have a very simple conversation to uncover why you're stuck and find out if I can help you. Find out if Awakened Motherhood can give you the results that you want. And if you are still hashing it out and you believe you should do it on your own and you think if you just kind of try harder and push harder, but that results in exhaustion and more irritability and more overwhelm, please reach out to someone in your life, reach out to whoever you already have been seeing for help that you forgot to, uh, you, you dropped off of. Do the things that you know help. If you've done those and you've exhausted those and you've meditated and you've gone to therapy and you have read all the parenting books and you have taken the parenting course and you have um, tried to be present and, and done all those things and you are still stuck or hitting the wall, then absolutely don't hesitate. Say below, yes, I want help, and I'll reach out to you. I'll send you the application. Let's see if you're a good fit for a call, and we can go from there. All right? I'll offer a free clarity call. It's a complimentary consultation to anybody who's stuck. I love to help moms. I love to find out if I can help you to get to the end result and outcome, and I'm helping lots and lots of other women to do that. So, again, um, this is not for everyone. This is not, um, uh, what I do is not a one size fits all approach. So that's why the call, that's why we need to find out. Okay. If you're interested and want the help, don't hesitate. Click the call link around this video and I look forward to catching up with you.